I'd like to call this February 6th work session to order. contacted us and said he was sick this evening and he couldn't make the meeting. So I'll start with the fire chief. The uh, carbon monoxide program, we're continuing to move along with that. We've done uh, 170 carbon monoxide alarms so far. We're working on about 40 current requests. Um, and, and during the time that we've been installing them, we've also been installed about 40 smoke detectors. So we've even found some people that after all this time, don't have any smoke detectors at all. Um, right. Mr. Dillon, they got some of the signs put up on the, on the, uh, the borough billboards, and uh, that's really spiked an increase in the request. Uh, so that's done a really good job for us. Um, the, uh, just to let you know, the FEMA radio grants, they started to award those uh, federal grants. Um, Actually, the fire company consolidated received uh, $300,000 for a new fire truck. Uh, on the radio side, they, they uh, just issued the first grant for Bucks County. That was some of the fire companies in Crystal Township, <coughs> Ben Salem, and Falls Township. And there looks to be at least two more of the Bucks County Fire Department groups are in line for uh, the radio grants. Unfortunately, we haven't heard anything yet. We, we weren't declined, but uh, we haven't heard anything positive yet on that. And that's it. Yeah, we have any questions for the fire chief? Thanks, Harvey. I uh, noticed today there were two guys out from the firehouse next to Wawa. Uh, they were installing them. I seen they were out with, mentioned to me that's what they were doing. So it's a good program. Hopefully, if people are more aware of it and they call the borough, they get called Maria 788 382 extension 10. We've been using 785-4501 okay. extension 27, which is which is my line. So call that number yes. then. And then they can still go, they can go right on the borough website. There's a link, click that link, put your name, address, phone number, it'll send me an email. And we've gotten about 10 of those so far. Well, maybe we can get something in uh, the newspapers about it, too, for the seniors to call that number that you're mentioning. What was the number again, Harvey? 215-785-4501, extension 27. And it's a free carbon monoxide detector to anybody in a borough, and they'll even come and install it for you. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah, and, and we, you know, we've had a couple people <coughs> make remarks about, you know, give them to the poor people. We, we have enough to do everybody that will need one, most likely, and not dependent on income. So if anyone needs it, call that number, go online, make the request, and we'll have somebody come out and install it for you. <coughs> okay. Mr. Pazza, what do you have? Um, just, just a few things. Uh, first of all, before we get to Mrs. Cullen, I don't think I'm going to steal her thunder because I think she'd probably be a little too bashful to bring it up now, but um, Morgan Cullen, the daughter of our councilwoman Lorraine Cullen, scored 1,000 points um, last week, and we're all very happy to see that. So I, I would ask that maybe if we could, as a borough council, have some sort of proclamation similar to when we had the, um, the state champions here, something like that, just to recognize Morgan. She's the first one to do it, and 20 years since Stephanie Casperson did it in 1992, so it's quite an accomplishment, and I was just hoping maybe we as a borough council could could recognize Morgan for that accomplishment. Uh, would, she like, would she like to do it at Monday's meeting or at Feb next month? Is basketball over? Uh, maybe we should wait. I don't Until know March. If playoffs or, you know, what's going on yet. We'll let, try to let Marie know if we could do it this Monday. If right. not, we'll do I it. I will let you know because then softball's going to start. So <laughs> just one more thing. So okay. If we could do it Monday. Be great. Thank you. Thanks. Very great. much. That's great. Um, and then just a, a few other things um, that we've been discussing in here that uh, isn't new to a lot of people, but just a few things that we've done. Um, a few weeks ago, we discussed about the Farragut Avenue Business District. And uh, a few things that are going on there that I would like to consider that we continue to keep our eye on. One was the Novacare facility that was a kind of a pile of rubble for a little while. 
and I was encouraged by the fact that it, it seems to me, and I think, Ralph, you're going to explain a little bit more about that a little sure. later. Uh, it seems to me that we've come to a resolution, at least a temporary resolution. Uh, I know there are going to be <clears throat> other things considered moving forward uh, as to how that will actually look. But, uh, you know, I think that we had a pretty positive meeting about um, getting that resolved. And uh, with that, you know, I think we're starting to move pretty well in the right direction on Farragut Avenue. I know Mrs. Cullen and I are both very concerned and, and encouraged by some of the things that are incurring, uh, occurring. Uh, two weeks ago, we had... Uh, the World War II vets say that they're really getting moving, so I'm seeing that as kind of bookends of Farragut Avenue. And then also uh, Charlie Carp's Pub has been purchased. I'm, I'm sure most of you know that, but for those of us that have kind of poked our head in or asked a few questions, it really looks like these guys are going to be the real deal as far as good, sound businessmen who uh, seem to care about their neighborhood and care about the community. Uh, they're going to be creating their own parking. So. Obviously, with the people in the area that would be concerned with that as far as parking and crowds go. It just seems like a lot of things are moving in the right direction in Farragut Avenue, and, and I hope we can keep it that way. Um, and then the last thing, I, I've given to um, everyone a, a, an ordinance that was used by Hazleton. Uh, there's a college at Hazleton, Penn State Hazleton, and couches on their porches there are somewhat of an issue. Um, and I brought up a few weeks ago that there are a number of properties in town where... <coughs> There are outdoor furniture that attract, you know, attract smells, attract rodents, attract things that are just unfair to the neighbors. And uh, I was, I, I had told borough council that I would look into it, and I found an ordinance that I think may work for us. But I'm not looking to get it on the agenda next week, but just something I would like us to start considering. I, I gave it to the solicitor, and hopefully the solicitor can take a little bit more of uh, a look at that and what that might look like. Um, I would like to say we're not here to um, really kind of. We're not trying to target anyone in particular. We're not even trying to raise money with fines or anything like that. All we want is, the, is people to be fair to their neighbors. Uh, and I think if we do pass this ordinance, we will be giving people plenty of time to comply before we just start slapping out you know, uh, citations or fines or anything like that. So this is not aimed at any, any one person, any few people. This is designed just to raise the bar and, and, and be considerate of our neighbors and take pride in our in our neighborhoods and our community. So um, I hope I hope we can do that. And then the last thing I have, sorry, um, is the intersection of Monroe and Farragut Avenue. Mrs. Cullen and I were, were discussing this uh, as we've discussed pretty much everything that I just brought up. Um, and uh, there's I, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. It's like a five-way intersection. Um, it's just very confusing to a lot of people. I know the chief's not here tonight, but I'm wondering if we can just look a little bit more closely at that, whether it be proper signage or proper traffic flow. I don't know, but it, it's a very confusing intersection. I, I go to work out there every day, and I still don't know whose turn it is when I'm supposed to turn onto the street. So. Why don't you uh, just make a recommendation? You talk to have Jim talk to the chief okay. and set something up. He'll probably have Peter Fate come out because sure. he handles the traffic and see if we can get it resolved. That'd be great. So, Mr. Jones, if you wouldn't mind doing that, that'd be great. And I think if they could go further back, too, to um, the other, what's the other street that comes out? Fillmore. Fillmore, right. Because when you're coming um, from West Circle, yeah. it's a little dangerous there, too. So maybe that whole little area there, it, it's uh, trouble. Okay. I almost got hit there. Coming, yeah, it's, you know, it's dangerous. So okay. That's all I have. Thank depends you. Depends on speeding, too. Um, I just want to ask Mr. Dillon to explain what's going on. Uh, what PennDOT responded about Green Lane under the bridge with the signage and the lights? We had a meeting there approximately uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, and uh, they came back at us and said they, they would do uh, some additional signing, uh, but they said from the Harrisburg office uh, they took the position that they were not responsible for any lighting and that the lighting would be on the borough. I asked specifically who made that decision about eight days ago, and I didn't get an answer. So I don't know if uh, they're ignoring the inquiry, but uh, I will follow up on that uh, inquiry as to exactly who's making the decision in Harrisburg that the state's not responsible for uh, lighting uh, on state roads as well as you know, by the uh, railroad uh, underpass. Uh, also, Mr. Waldron is uh, uh, obtaining uh, cost estimates uh, for lighting uh, for that area. 
So uh, once we have that, that's something we can, you know, consider if uh, the state is going to be uh, adamant about <coughs> not uh, putting up uh, lighting. Also, like to point out the other side of the underpass is really Bristol Township, so possibly uh, we could uh, ask them for 50% uh, if, in fact, we do elect to do uh, any lighting. But uh, that's basically the, where it's at. Thank you. All right. That meeting, uh, I attended that meeting with, mm -hmm. with Merle and uh, George, Mr. Dillon. Uh, they really don't want to hear anything. We took a position on the sidewalk. People can trip on the sidewalk. There's muddle. They don't really want to hear anything. It's like you own it. We don't feel we own it, but uh, we are, like Jim said, we are getting quotes on lighting and everything. Let's see what, how it comes back. Would would um, the railroad be responsible at all for that? They're not. Which brings up another thing. And Dot is saying. They own from curb to curb between the street. They're saying from the curb outward, we own. Oh, really? We don't feel we do own. So that's something we're looking so at. So we're supposed to maintain the bridge then? Is that what you're oh, saying? That's our argument. That's ridiculous. All right. Um, and it was freezing that morning. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I'm really concerned about the fence that's being put up as well and it's really out of my area so I'm going to let these guys talk about it but I, I cannot get over that the fence that's going to go up where the railroad is on Garden Street that's the area that I'm from I lived on Mansion Street my whole life um, I know they don't maintain after they they put fences up behind it there'll be trash there um, it's just upsetting to see and um, friends with a couple people over in that area and they have they have spoken to me about it but um, I know Mr. Dillon has been <coughs> contacting them and trying to have them change it but where are you at with that Mr. Dillon? Well, why don't you see if Lorraine if Tony or Pat okay. is anything I'll let it go on. all right but I, I just want you to know I'm concerned about it as well. Okay so we could jump in on that. Are you finished Lorraine? Yes I am. Um, we, we definitely had residents that are that are concerned, and Mr. Dillon has done a, a great job in contacting, uh, I'm sure Amtrak and whoever else he contacted, because there was work being done. The poles were erected, but there hasn't been any movement on those uh, on the fence since uh, I would say the two weeks since we had that little bit of snow. I haven't seen anybody else out there. So if you want to, Mr. Dillon, can let us know exactly you know, the people in the. the in the North Ward. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, we had a meeting set up the other day for uh, with Amtrak, and they brought in, I think, four or five of their people. Four, four of their people, along with myself, Mr. Dillon, Merle, Herbie was here, the fire chief, uh, Sally, <coughs> and uh, Mike Fitzpatrick's uh, aide and our solicitor. And we met for a good hour and a half, maybe even longer, about this fence. And it seems like, again, the argument is they're going to put up what they want to put up. I don't think we're going to be able to stop put this fence from going up. And our argument was, in Hireman, you put up mm -hmm. a decorative fence that isn't offensive to anybody. And they said that that fence isn't on borough property. That's why that fence went up. The fence is on borough property. It's not on their property. They only have four fences to choose from. The nicest looking fence that they showed us was the chain link fence. The other ones have, it looked like a wire mesh. The other one has steel up top like razor where you can, for high security areas. Uh, Jim, we had, it was pretty heated, and Merle was there, you could tell you, it was a pretty heated argument in this room. We took a position that this fence isn't going up. We don't care what PennDOT wants to do, and they said it's the same fence going from Philadelphia to Washington mm -hmm. on both sides for Homeland Security. We also asked them to give us documentation on who made this law and who said this fence had to go up. So everything we threw out as much as we can 
at this meeting to try to prevent this fence from going up, correct, Harvey? I mean, you were at the meeting. So how it was left, they're willing to do some landscaping to try to soften it. We said you can't soften this fence. It's eight foot high. It's gone up the embankments. But again, like I said, it, it's. I don't think we're going to stop it. Right. Well, a couple of issues there. I mean, I already had, and I'm sure Pat does too. There's already a couple of residents that are ready to move. If that fence goes up, we will be, and they're good people in that community. They will be putting their houses up, and we will be losing them. And the thing about it is, I understand their fence and its homeland security, and I see what they did in Croydon on 13. That makes more sense along a, a highway that they put that type of fence up. But in a residential area where I have pictures of the last fence that they have on the first block by the baseball field. And it looks like crap. I mean, everything's overgrown. It's coming through. Nobody's taking I wish care you of it. would have attended the meeting. I mean, you would have seen how these people don't want to hear anything. Am I all correct? Yeah, and I don't think they were on the same page either. Uh, the guy that was there from the Washington area, the solicitor challenged him because he said he had a, a directive from Homeland Security to put the fence up from Washington to Boston. And they're doing it piecemeal. They're not like starting in Washington and going to Boston. So, I mean, and this isn't the same division that put the fence up in Harriman. This is somebody totally different. That's Ruby. Yeah. Did they I say mean, how that like was going to happen? Like Bill said, our solicitor said, well, I'd like you to go put this fence in front of your house, wherever you live. See how you would like it. I mean, this is how this meeting went. It got to a point where we end up ending the meeting, but we said that we're not going to accept this fence. So now they need the documentation Jim asked for, the documentation our solicitor asked for. We're hoping to get that. But if they went out there tomorrow and put this fence up, it's their property. They said, we own this. You don't own this property. We do. Right. So. How, about, how about for the regular residents? I know when I wanted to put a fence up at my house, when you have frontage, you can't have that high fence. We said that. And they don't care? Well, I mean, that's what Jim said. Jim said, show us the federal guidelines or documentation. If the federal government said they could put it up, we can't overrule right. it. So all the things we ask for, we're hoping that they produce. Did they say anything about Homeland Security? What purpose is that going to serve? Is it going to keep what? Nothing. Oh, okay. They didn't say anything about it? not going to serve any purpose. How about if you have an emergency up there? We told them, like Lorraine said, with all the trash, blow, they said, well, how are you going to get trash? Well, it blows up in the air and goes behind the fence. Who's going to clean it? Yeah. Are you going? I said, are you going to send a crew out every month or every few weeks for these people that live across the street to make sure it looks nice. Because if you look where the ball fields are, it's a disgrace. Yeah. And you, I said, you guys put that fence up. And the people, the residents can't get over there to clean it up, because that's what they're doing now. They they're won't even there. let you, they won't even give you a key to the gate. I even brought up an argument where, God forbid, a kid climbed over the fence mm -hmm. and fell on that side of the fence. How do we, our police or fire, get there quick enough, God forbid, to, to rescue this kid? Or if there's a train wreck, how do we get up to the high lines to do something? They don't want to hear anything. So, I mean, I think I summed it up as much as we does, can. But Does Amtrak have the same protections as, like, a utility company yes. does as far as superseding local laws? Yes. Federal, too. Federal, too. Yeah, terrible. So what got them to stop so far? We just wait for their paperwork, or they... I think the Congressional Office got them to stop, and uh, we're asking uh, them to document their legal authority to put that type of offense up. And, you know, we, we, again, we hit them with the idea that if a fence is actually needed, they should give us a better-looking fence and uh, something that, you know. We also asked them to start in Washington and work their way to Bristol. <laughs> so. What they say to that? They're not moving. Their equipment's here. They said that fence is going in. So, what else you have, Mr. Devine? Uh, the other thing, I had some stuff for the chief. I guess I could direct them to the mayor. Uh, mayor, the last time I, I did that walkthrough, right, there was something else there that I, I, I didn't bring up because, you know, it was kind of it was kind of tough to get it out. But uh, 
down in the holding cell area, there's a there's a holding cell chair. I guess when it's overcrowded in the holding cell, there's a chair there. I guess there's some, you know they have an extra person there that needs to be you know locked up or whatever. And I noticed that it's I mean it's a heavy duty metal chair and it has a bore there. I guess you could cuff to. I guess mm -hmm. the problem I saw was this: is that there were holes for bolts, but there was no bolts in it, so you can move it. So if somebody comes in there hopped up on something, and we got officers that are there, you know, doing their paperwork or whatever they're doing on the computer, that is a, a risk for, you know, the safety of our officers, number one. Number two, we have crazy expensive equipment in there that could be damaged very easily. And then, you know, third, then we're going to have to worry about, you know, even, even more litigation. So if you can have, you know, somebody look at that spot, maybe we can get somebody in there and bolt it down. Uh, and uh, I guess the, the next part is uh, on that topic. How are we making out with the, uh, with the investigation that uh, Mr. DiGiuseppe ordered by you and the uh, chief? I'll have my answer Monday night. Monday night? Yes. Okay. Now, is there a, do we have a policy that talks about or, or that, that, that shows that officers aren't allowed to bring citizens into the police department? Is there currently a policy for that? I don't believe there is. No, not at this time. We're looking into it. Right. Now, Mayor, did you feel that it was it was, it was pretty uh, strange that Mr. DiGiuseppe would direct you to do an investigation on something that we don't even have a policy for? He's probably not aware that there was no policy. I don't feel it's strange, no. No. But, uh, I think the investigation we're asking for, Tony, is the fact that you said the department is racist, anti-gay, and under a grand jury investigation. That's why I wrote a letter to Mr. Heckler asking him to come in and do a full investigation of your allegations. Well, I think what happened was, the first thing is, when I was taught, and I know I'm new, and I, I was given a tutorial by the solicitor, and he told us not to talk about these you know, pending litigation in public. And I, and I took that. I listened to it. And then, as the president, you didn't listen to it. You went to the paper and started talking about, and you, and you misquoted me as saying that I said that there were things, you didn't name me personally, but you were talking about me, because I brought it to people's attention. I never, ever said that the police department was racist or anti-gay. What I said, there was a picture in there that was racist and anti-gay. I thought and you said that you didn't feel, you, you didn't care to see the picture. But you decided that it was more important to find out who let me into the police department to see it. So what I saw in there was two things. I saw that picture, which was offensive. The second thing I saw was down in, in the holding cell area, right, that could eliminate some potential litigation and safety for our own officers. So I never, ever said that, the, no, the I, I think you, did, you said well, that. Listen, that. I absolutely didn't say that. I have friends that are on that police department, and I know that they're not racist or anti-gay. So I wouldn't say that because I, I know them. <coughs> and I wouldn't say it because I don't feel that way. What I'm saying, the, the reason I brought it up is for this reason, and I hope you understand, is that when you when you look at the police department, right, I, I like to make things, let me let me make an analogy so I can, I can bring this together. If the borough was a human body, a person, the police department is the heart, right? It is the heart of the borough. The council is the brains. The workers are the hands and feet. They keep it going. Now, if you're sick, right, if these things start coming up, you have, you, you might have a little pain in your chest. It might be a little odd. Though. So you might overlook it. That could be one of the, one of the signs of a heart attack, but we overlook it. That's fine. That's one thing. The second thing, you might get a little pain in your arm. We ignore that. Then we might get a pain running down our leg, and we ignore that. And then we might have uh, our heart pumping out of our chest. We're sweating. And by that time, it's too late. We're going to die of a heart attack. And that's what I'm saying. What's happening is there's too many symptoms that are going on that there's something that's not, not right down in, the, in, in our police department. I want to know what it is and what we can do to change it. You feel that way. I do. But nobody else sitting here, I think, feels that way. I don't feel I don't, that way. I don't 
think I think you're making a statement down there that you took it offensive. I did see the picture. Mm -hmm. I don't find it offensive at all. Whoa. Okay. I really don't. Well, that's fine. But what I'm saying is that Plus, the picture that you handed out to council mm -hmm. isn't the picture that was on the board. There's some things missing on the picture that you handed out. So. But what I'm saying, the only picture that I saw was the picture that I handed. <coughs> the picture that you handed out, first of all, if it was a picture, it was a picture of, is it Tupac? Or whatever it is, you guys. I don't know. He's a rapper. Like He's a rapper. Uh, Tupac. It was yes. a picture of Tupac, which. Is this something that we're going to focus on? I was under the impression that we don't focus on. Mr. President, uh, could we not discuss an ongoing investigation at this time? Sure. I'll let you handle it Monday Thank night. Thank you. But you did put a letter in everybody's packet saying. I shouldn't have wrote a letter to the district attorney's office. <coughs> All right. Now, here's the, I'm glad you brought that up. Go ahead. Because it's the same thing that happened, right? Is the solicitor told us, told you too, you told us, not to talk about ongoing litigation, but you called the paper and you decided on your own to write a letter to the district attorney. Why wouldn't you just write a letter to the president of the United States? Because I wrote a letter to the district attorney's office to clear the borough's name. Made a statement. He, you made a wait, statement, Tony, that, that the borough count. Did you? The borough's name. You said the borough the is under an ongoing the lawsuit. The reason there is a lawsuit has nothing to do with a lawsuit. It does because we're not supposed to be talking about it. No, it doesn't. So you bring it to did the you read my letter? Yes. Did you? Did you sit up here and say that the borough is under an ongoing grand jury investigation? And did matter. you answer the question? Wait a second. You're not the did you or did you I'm not answer one. that question? I want to tell you. Well, you're going to just dance around all night. I'm not right? Answer the question. I'm not going to dance. Stop talking. I'll answer the question. The question, can you repeat the question, please? You said when you stood at that podium <coughs> and when you, the night you got sworn in, said that the police department was under an ongoing grand jury investigation. Okay. Did you or did you not make I that statement? Now, listen to me. Did, did the district attorney, did he or did he not say that there was? I'm only asking you. Listen to me. Did you answer my question? I said yes. Answer did my question. I just did. I said yes. No. Here's my question. Did the district attorney say yes? After I sent the letter. Right. Did the district after I sent the letter. Did you read the letter? Wait, wait. After you sent the letter. Yeah. He said there was no prosecution. That doesn't mean there wasn't anything that I don't think I could. I don't think this can get any easier for you. No, no, please. It's not really? I'm, I'm very clear. No, you're, you're not clear. Here's the, here's the question. Yeah. You made the statement twice that the Borough Police Department <coughs> was under an ongoing grand jury investigation. Right, now answer this question. And, answer this question. And Where let me they? finish. Were they? Yes, after yes. this hearing. Thank but you. But did we know that? Did anybody sitting up here know that? When I, when I send yeah, a letter, you let me I read the letter. Do you want me to read the letter for you? No, I gotta read. Okay. Well, I don't know if you do because apparently, I'm a teacher. apparently read. you're you, you understand the letter. You gotta take tests. You gotta teach. You gotta pass tests. Okay. Anyway, when I brought it up, the mayor said at that meeting he said he didn't know if it was <laughs> or it wasn't. Say Nobody knew if there was an investigation or was it. I don't see why you keep jumping in. Let me talk. That's what I'm trying to finish. When I brought it up, the mayor said that he's not aware, he's not sure if there's a police, but he will say that there were some officers that were subpoenaed. You knew no. something, didn't you? No, I didn't know anything. Okay, well, that's dancing around. That's dancing around things. But why would I write a letter to ask the district attorney to clear the bar's name? Because he couldn't do anything about why is it? Why did he just call the because he you're acting, you're here. acting like a child. That's a you child. really are. I'm being serious. Why don't you, you be? Yes. You, you said you're an educated person. I am. Yeah. So why don't you just stick to the facts? They, they were the facts. The facts That's are true. that you made a statement in this council chamber That's twice true. that the borough was under an ongoing grand jury investigation, That's true. and there was anti-gay and anti-racism in the picture. police department. Picture in the police yeah. department Nobody said that you found to be anti. I don't find anything wrong with it. That's okay, that, that's and I'll explain I why I don't have anything wrong with it after the mayor talks Monday night. I'm not just going to let this go. Good. But you I'm, made a I'm statement that about this police department. I wrote a letter to the district attorney 
asking them to come in. The statement you made that the borough was under an ongoing grand jury investigation. Okay, so I wrote a letter to the district attorney asking him about the statement you made. Is there any truth to it? You want me to read the letter? You keep going back to this letter. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is this. I was told by our vice president that we are one-eighth, each of a vote. You are one-eighth. I have a right to send a letter. You have a right to send a letter. You set the agenda. You set the agenda. Now, to me, I wouldn't want to write a letter to the DA and ask for an investigation. Don't you want transparency? You're asking for an investigation. Don't you want transparency? Don't you want everything out? That's what I'm here for. Okay, so then by asking him to come in, how much clearer can you get it? Because why would a DA come in and clear the barrel of a civil rights violation? You're missing. It's not a civil rights violation. You said they're under a grand jury investigation. So we don't know if that's what it was for. So who cleared it? The district attorney. We don't know. We asked you. Do you have any knowledge? Let me finish with the mayor. All right. Mayor, I wish the chief was here because I don't know if you would know this, but I'm assuming, like any municipality or business or government agency, excuse me, that we have a policy on diversity. Do we? Do you know offhand if we do or not? I believe we do, yes. Okay. Now, if we have, and I figured that we did. I just wish that the chief was here so maybe he would be able to kind of explain it to us. But this is what really drives me crazy in the sense that you're missing the point. The point is you said you want to talk to the mayor. Yeah, I know. Now you want to talk to me? Yeah. Go ahead. And it's like the point is we have a policy on diversity, right? We do have a policy on that. To stick with things, right, in the police department, keep them non-discriminatory, okay? No discrimination. We have to keep them so there's no harassment going on. All these things, I'm sure, in that policy. But we decide, I should say we, you decide on your own to have directing, and you always act like you're not part of the police force, you're not in the mayor's seat, or you're not the solicitor. What I'm saying is you have more power than you act like you do. That's what I'm saying. That bothers you, doesn't it? It only bothers me because it does bother me because we're all supposed to be one. I work just as hard as you did to get elected. And if people elect me, I want to have just as much of a voice. Why don't you? You've been talking for 15 minutes. Longer. I think it was like 17. But the point of that is this. The point I'm making is we have a policy on diversity, discrimination. And you decided not to have an investigation into who put the picture up there, right? You decided not to have an investigation. The mayor's taking care of that. I know, but you directed it. We didn't make that decision. We didn't make that decision at all as a team. But you're going to make a statement. You made the choice. Just you. You're right. You did. You're right. That's all we're here. You made the statement in a public meeting about anti-gay and anti-racism. Absolutely. I said to the mayor to investigate it. Don't you want him to investigate it? Not that I have anything against the mayor. I like the mayor. I like the chief personally. You don't like me. I do like you. I never have anything against you. I like you. So what's the problem? Here's the problem. The problem is we are all one-eighth of a vote. So when I said to the mayor to investigate it, why didn't you say the other night, I don't want you to? Because this is why. Because it's not up to the mayor. It's not up to the chief to investigate their own. Well, who's it up to? That's what I'm asking. That's why I want a third party to come in. And that's why I sent the letter to Heckler. So what the hell are you talking about? I sent Heckler a letter. It's no good. We asked the chief and the mayor to do it. It's no good. So you tell us what you want us to do. Let me investigate. If somebody wants to investigate me, I go, yes. Now, I'm going to let my mom and my dad investigate it. Are we going to get the results that we want? And what I'm saying is this. But that's why I wrote a letter to the district attorney. That's not good enough. I'm not going to get against her. The letter we're having against is you're sending it for all of us. Whose name's on the letter? Yours? 
On the top it says, what's it say? Bristol Borough. Did you send okay. one that says Ralph D. Giuseppe? No, I Bar signed this letter. That's what I'm saying. I signed what's it. What does it say up top? It doesn't say Ralph D. Giuseppe. You want an investigation, you want transparency. I do. So we're going to have the mayor and the if chief. I can, if I can get back to the, where you said that the, if there's an investigation to be done, the mayor or the chief shouldn't do that. We should bring a third party in. I have to disagree with that. The mayor and the chief, if there's a problem down there, we should investigate it first. If we feel that we can't do it justly, then we go outside. Understandable. That's how we do that. Okay, understandable. Uh, now I do have some other issues. Uh, North Ward, the dirt mound that is on Buckley Street. <coughs> I went to a school board meeting Thursday to try try to figure out what we're going to do with the, what the school board is, is going to do with that dirt pile. Now I know that they are, you know, they're, they're having a tough time with money, but. With that dirt pile, the, the concern I had, the more immediate concern I have is we know it's contaminated with something. So I want to make sure because with a heavy rain, even not a heavy rain, that water, if it's contaminated, it's going to it's going to go into our street and it's going to go into our sewer system. And the other thing is the kids are on that hill. The kids are on the hill. They're playing on that hill. And I know if one of my kids were there, I wouldn't want them on that hill. Because we don't even know what's in the pile itself. So the first thing we need to do is, well, I mean, we could we could help the school board out. Is we need to number one get that mound tested. The dirt needs to be tested to find out first of all what's in it. The second thing we need to do, and more immediate, is we have to have a fence put up to keep those kids from getting onto that hill. One of those kids is going to break their neck. One of those kids is going to break their neck, Mr. Devine, and we're going to have some more litigation. You were on the school board for nine months. What did you do about the dirt pile when you were on the school board? Ralph, I was on the school board for two weeks. How you weren't. You were on the school board for nine months almost. How do you know? You follow me? No, but I know how long you were on the school board. What did you do about the dirt pile? Uh, the as dirt far as council has hey, nothing to do. Back okay, time. talk. What I like to do is this. I like to move forward. There's okay. dirt there that's. What do you want us to do? This is what I want to do. I Make want to an be agenda able, item. All right. I want to be able to work with the school district. I heard it's going to cost about five. Now, what I need is, Mr. Solano, if you could get me, if you could get me this information to find out when the last time that that dirt was tested and what the contents of that dirt mound is to see what contaminants are in it. To see, because I know there's a different level of it, cost to move it with, depending on what's in it. So I need to find that information out, and then maybe we can work. I mean, young Ralph, you know, he's the school board president. We talk about it, and it costs about five thousand. I wouldn't mind if we could talk about splitting. I know they're in a tough spot. Maybe come up twenty-five million <coughs> piece to help them out. Because what's happening is it's getting the water is getting out into. The North Ward, and it's not fair to the people in the North Ward on Buckley Street, where you know it's just done. Uh, at this time, do you want anything put on the agenda or no? Yeah. Can I intercede here real quick? <clears throat> Tony and I took a ride after the rainstorm. We got a phone call. He got a call. I got a call. We went over and looked. The water is causing a little bit of erosion. It's coming to the sidewalk and onto the street. So, rather than, now this becomes a council. <coughs> it's not on our street, correct? I don't think so, but. Okay, well, either way. So what I said is, why don't we try to do it a way to contain it real inexpensively? And my idea was, is to push it back a hair, maybe a foot, put down a six by six or four by four, this clean it, with 10 mil, whatever millage you can do, the highest, not far, just enough, and staple gun it, staple hammer it, the plastic to the wood, and it will not go into one of the neighbor's property, because that neighbor's getting hit really hard. Uh, you remember Councilman Musi bringing this up, trying to get something done with the dirt pile. But we couldn't do it. And we all said we that it was saying, a school issue. Right. But what I'm trying to say is, 
we could help the school. With the uh, crew. I don't think there's anything coming out of that dirt pile is that hazardous or would never been put there. Okay. I don't know what the school board did at that time. I can't speak for him. You were on the board, so you should know what's in the dirt and everything. I'm just looking for but just a little fix to just stop that leakage from us. It, it's like uh, it's like like you would get in the trash dump. Well, maybe let George go out there next time it rains and look at it. And I'll show George what I can do. I mean, it's no big deal. You only have to go but at this I, point. I can road. tell you, and I'll do, you know I support you in anything you want to do. Yes, I am not spending our tax dollars for things that belong to the school. But, Ralph, we're the same. No, we're not. We're, we're, we're the same. Well, that's only one vote, Tony. I, I know, I'm just, I'm only you voting. said there's I'm eight not, people listen, here. Ralph, I don't, I don't I'm just giving you my opinion. Adversarial. It doesn't, I don't want it to be that way. All I'm saying is. We're the same tax base. Whether okay. the school board, that was part of the thing why we're supposed to be closer together. We have this, our solicitor is also the solicitor for the school board. Should, we should use that to help us to make it easier to do things. And this is a problem where it affects both the school board and the council. But it may not be affecting the council. It is. If it's running off of a hill. But that doesn't it's mean it's contaminated. You what's coming off of contaminated. it. But that doesn't mean it can't go into your system or it's something that hazard. The entire site that's there has that same dirt. The entire site, where all the baseball fields were, the playgrounds were, has the same exact dirt that's in that mound. How? We didn't get, it's we didn't get it tested yet. It's, well, it was tested before. It's right. called regulated soil. Regulated soil means that it just may not be suitable to be put back down. But if they had to, you can't dig up the entire site or the entire town. They all have the same things. It may have a couple things in it that isn't suitable for a playground, but may be suitable to put somewhere else. That's what they're looking into. Right, but at the school board meeting, we, we talked about it, and it was brought to my attention that it was so long ago, they didn't have the date. It was so long ago that it was tested, it had to be retested. Right. So that's what I mean. This is what I want, and you can help me. Put an agenda item. How do you put an agenda item on, on for uh, what do you want? Monday? What do you want? I want to work something out where we can get this tested, work with the uh, school board, maybe split the cost, get it tested, find out what's in it, and then come up with a plan to get rid of it. So your motion is to put on the agenda that we split the cost of the testing, whatever it is. Yes. To That's it? Yes, absolutely. Okay. What else? Thank you. Um, so can I interrupt you? Sure. Any idea what that would cost? The testing, I think, ballpark figure of 5,000, so 2,500 a piece. I'm sure we could shop around, okay. to, you know, figure something out. You sure the school board wants to spend the 2,500? Well, I don't think they should have a choice. I mean, we're going to meet them halfway, and it's affecting, you know, if this was a regular property, a business or anything else, that thing would have been gone. It's in the North Ward, and... It's always been in the North Ward, Tony. Right, I'm just saying, it's in the North Ward, but if it was in a different ward, it wouldn't have been there so long. Yep. Something would have been done if it was in the South Ward or the West think Ward. Think so? Absolutely. I Absolutely. think you're probably right. All right. Well. In the South Ward. That would have been put there. Right. Um, the last thing is Fourth Avenue Motors. Now, this is really for, for the residents of that area. They have serious parking issues, and... Um, I talked to the inspector, and, and they're trying, you know, they, they're bringing the owner of 4th Avenue Motors to court to try to, you know, figure out, but he's not answering whatever calls they're giving him. So what he, the inspector told me to tell the residents is to call the police anytime there's somebody who is parked illegally. Let them come out and give those cars citations. So. The people of that area need to call the police department, tell them the cars are parked there illegally. And I, I was hoping that the chief was here so I could let them know if we can have a, a police car patrol that area. So that way you don't put the, the burden on the residents to call. A lot of the older residents over there feel uncomfortable calling the police, leaving their name. If we could just have a patrol car there doing it already, just to, to, to be a, a presence in that area, we could probably keep some of that from happening. Um, Parking, and yeah, that's about it that I have. Uh, first of all, getting back to the fence, I think the fence is a major, major.
problem for the North Ward. Um, <coughs> uh, and I want to thank Mr. Dillon and his diligence in uh, saying this all the way to Congressman uh, Fitzpatrick's office and getting Amtrak into the office. And I want to thank everybody who attended that meeting. I could not be there that day, but uh, sure would like to have been. But thank you for doing that. And um, I'm sure anything with Amtrak's heated because no one knows what one hand's doing with those with that group. Uh, we we still haven't gotten the uh, the concrete barriers put around uh, Corson Street, have we, Merrill, or and Pine? When they said they were going to come out and put concrete around the piers, we still haven't done that. And that guy promised that what a they year ago. One fellow that was at the meeting that day stated that they have something in the works right now to start working on the Spruce Street bridge. Okay. So we have Spruce, uh, the North Ward's funny because a lot of the bridges, except for Bath and Green, come through the North Ward. Jefferson, Corson, Pine, Spruce. I told him, Pat, that you're spending thousands of dollars on a fence when we have rebar sticking out of our bridges. Exactly. And, and he, said, right he said that they're on the schedule okay. to be fixed. Now, that's what he said. But at the time when me and Merrill met that gentleman, he said that that was going to be taken care of. We even Quicker showed him trees. pictures. Right. Um, but uh, getting back to uh, the fence, um, you had said that you had seen four fences. And the chain link is the worst one? Or the best Nicest one? one. How about color? Well, was color an, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it was color no. an option? Not even black? What goes up can come down, I guess. Right? <laughs> I mean, put it up. I mean, whatever goes up can come down. Uh, do you, Jim, real quick, in your dealings <laughs> with Amtrak, do you think that this is a dead issue we're done? Think that they're going to put this fence up regardless? So everything's at a standstill right there. I mean, behind uh, Homeland Security, that a fence has to go up. Uh, like uh, the council president said, uh, right. they intend to put a fence up uh, from Boston down to below DC. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I would say if it wasn't for the congressman's. Uh, efforts, so uh, that fence probably would have been up by now. Yes, I agree with that. <clears throat> uh, they're doing their best, and uh, I did receive a call uh, this afternoon, went to <coughs> the voicemail, because I was in another part of the building. I called the guy back from Amtrak, so uh, I gave him my cell, so <coughs> he, said, uh, he said over the phone he needed some more time, that they were still researching things, so. Okay. Uh, getting back to the 4th Avenue Motors, we had taken a drive over there, and we seen it in cars parked underneath of the stop sign, cars parked on the side of Route 13. And I guess this would be something for the mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, when a car, used auto place, has cars parked on Route 13, is that something that the uh, police force can give a ticket to? Yes, it can. Can you see if you could um, look into that? Certainly. Uh, it's not only 4th Avenue Motors, it's also the other motor place on 5th. Um, <coughs> also, uh, Mr. Dillon, down the road, maybe this week or sometime next week, I'd like to sit down with you and Mr. Devine, and maybe you could brief us on this Route 13 project that's coming up. Is that scheduled for April? Uh, original, uh, the uh, Route 13 improvement project, which is supposed to be from 413 to the Levittown Parkway, it's about a $30 million uh, improvement. Uh, they had previously told us that the, uh, it was scheduled to start uh, this spring, but uh, I have a feeling it won't start this spring. Okay. And, you think uh, there's going we've to be asked delay? for a uh, meeting uh, of the three municipalities and PennDOT, so uh, hopefully that we'll have that meeting in the next 30 to 45 days. 
Okay. And as uh, Mr. <coughs> DiGiuseppe had said, uh, you know, he worked with us with the thing. Whatever we could do with the school board to help to work together, whatever it takes for that dirt mound, if they're not in a position right now to do it, you, understand, you know, you can understand that, but it is something that, you know, down the road, if we can get a grant, possibly, um, we have any uh, possibility in grants, Mr. Uh, Salerno? Redevelopment Authority said they were going to put up the money to test the dirt. Okay. They're just waiting for their money to clear. Okay, now with that being said, after that, is there any money out there for grants for removal? For removal? Yeah. Well, we, the, the RDA, we're, we're working with the RDA on that. Uh, the first step is to have it retested. Uh, we've also approached a, uh, an environmental attorney to help us with that. Uh, so the answer is there, there may be some funding. Because it has to be determined whether we need to take it off site or not. We have to work together with the school board on this. So, whatever it takes, that's it. No, we did have a meeting with uh, State Senator Tomlinson about trying to give get a grant for myself. Uh, my son, and our solicitor, the borough manager, and Tommy Tomlinson met about removing this dirt pile. So we are doing everything we can. I know. I believe that. There's but, no doubt about you know, that. I mean, I believe that no one wants it. I mean, we don't want it. Um, nobody wants nobody it. Nobody wants Either it. Either does the school. No, I know they don't. So, I mean, it's you know, it's just, everybody. to me, it's like something that, you know, is, I'll let that comment go. Well, it's not a, don't let it be, be a burden on you. It's not a no. burden. It's a burden. It's a burden on everybody. Right. But everybody's doing everything they can to remove this pile, to look for whatever money's available. We talked to redevelopment authority. We talked to environmentalists, like the solicitor said. So everybody's working on this to get it out of here as fast as possible. But I don't think it's a council issue. I think it's a school board issue. <coughs> okay. But yet we'll do everything we can to support them on that. Yeah, it definitely. You know, since you know we got a working school board that works good with the council. I mean, I know Councilman Musi wanted to move the dirt pile a year and a half ago. So, what else you got, Pat? That's it. I said. Leo. Two things. Um, every Sunday for our residents, there's basketball. Recreation League, Mercedes Rodriguez, Betty, they run it every Sunday. I was there, um, there was only 11 girls that signed up this week, so hopefully there'll be more girls. There was a lot of boys. And also the Little League every Saturday and Sunday. Tony Duger, um, they're running it at the Little League press box for all of our residents. Because Little League's right around the corner, so they wanted me to say it. That's all I have. Ms. Trinnell. It's a nice segue. Thank you, Leo, and to Maya. <laughs> um, a thought that I had, our Recreation Authority does a tremendous amount for the youth in the community. Um, and I thought perhaps, depending on what our budget is this year, that we could look into something, perhaps uh, adult recreation, just something that the older folks in town, I don't mean really old, <laughs> uh, my, my, my age, OK, my age, uh, not Mr. Pez's age. <laughs> But something that, that, that the older generation could do, whether it be a yoga class or a Pilates class or a dance class. I know that there's different, different organizations through town that offer things, but I thought through the Recreation Authority, since we do so much for the youth, that perhaps we just could lean a, a, a nod towards the older generation, just a suggestion. I can look into some possibilities and get back to council on, on my thoughts. Um, before we begin our festivals this year, I know earlier in the year I talked about the possibility of asking for small contributions from um, each vendor. Our traffic calming, um, they're, they're really, really stressed to their max. Their members are, are receding. There's, it's very, very hard for them when we have festival after festival after festival to be able to get all their volunteers out and get the equipment they need, et cetera. So one of the thoughts I'd had last year was if we could, as we have a festival, and obviously each vendor has to pay 
the, the uh, uh, sponsor for their table, but perhaps we could uh, ask them to give a $10 contribution towards traffic calming. Now, I don't know whether we need to do that, Mr. Um, Bill. Do we need a, an ordinance, or do we do that as a suggestion, or how can we support traffic calming in, in getting that contribution? Any suggestions? I think when the chief sits down with, and the fire chief, they have to plan, and Merle, they have to plan every event. They make a recommendation that every vendor donates ten dollars to the traffic police. Okay, and like that would be strongly, rec we need strongly recommended. I, I don't think so. I think we have a set procedure for the events, Merrill, where they come in with application and you go over the safety features. Yeah, we do, but but that only basically controls the safety of the event as far as the vendors go. Uh, the vendor's sponsor are the ones who controls what the fee is. We don't have anything to do with that. I understand that, but they have to get a clearance from the police chief before they can go ahead, right? Perhaps part of those procedures is we're going to we're going to impose a ten dollar per vendor fee for traffic safety, uh, and the sponsor is going to be responsible for collecting that. I don't think we need an ordinance for that. And if it becomes a problem, then perhaps we can pass an ordinance. But I would think a look to put it into that procedure because they're already coming in and we're providing a service to them for serve, for safety is say we'd like you to impose a, a fee for each yeah, well, vendor. We're one of the few communities around that don't really charge anything. If you go to a lot of these other municipalities and have events, you pay for everything. Well, that's my point. And, and again, without these... Without traffic calming at all the different streets and closing down all the streets, you'd have part-time police officers or full-time police officers doing this. And it will cost the municipalities a, a tremendous, it's a burden anyway. Quite frankly, these festivals are a burden. It burdens everybody. So I think it would be nice if we could help traffic calming out. So maybe you and I'll, or maybe when you, you and I can sit down and make sure that that's on your, your Robin, list. Robin, why don't you get a meeting with Merle and the chief? get this in some kind of letter form as soon as you before they start meeting. Okay. Um, I did want to thank the chief for the police cars on Mill and <coughs> they've had a noticeable presence and I appreciate it. Um, wanted to talk to the chief or to council about a four-way, and I don't know whether we can implement this, but a four-way stop sign at Canal Zone and Maple Beach Road. I noticed that since the new public works building has gone up, there's a lot of traffic coming off of Maple Beach Road and Canal's End. And there's only a stop sign at the end of Canal's at, at Maple Beach at Canal's End. And literally, you should see how many times, you know, very similar to, to your problem, Mr. Pezza, people don't, and, and I've, I've actually witnessed several almost accidents. So perhaps when Mr. Fate, when uh, uh, Sergeant Fate goes out to look at, at Monroe, he may want to take a look at that intersection also. That has to get done. Right. Right. That, you and I talked about that. And that's a dangerous that. intersection. And then the last thing is, I know when we did our budget, um, it seemed that there was a little bit of extra funds in the uh, street light budget. Um, and I drove around town a couple times, and I believe, I may be incorrect, I believe that the only playground that doesn't have lights is the Otter Street playground. So I kind of went around and checked on each, and each playground at night has, has lights, maybe not directly on the playground itself, but at the one at one West Stratton Avenue, there's, there's lights that along the path that shine on. So I don't know if that's something that perhaps we can look into it when the warm weather approaches. If there's extra money, I certainly don't want to burden taxpayers with additional costs, but if there's extra money in the coffers, it, it would be nice to have the lights over on the Outer Street play, uh, playground. And that's it. Pretty good tonight. <laughs> you didn't think I had it in me, did you? <laughs> I have a few things to run down. First of all, I'm going to have the manager put in everybody's packets for Friday a list of all boards and commissions. So on Monday night's agenda, there'll be a uh, agenda item to reappoint, or if anybody has any other, anybody they want to put up at that point, they can, but to fill all the boards and commissions. So you'll get that in your packet. Everybody has time to look at everybody that's on there. I would say from looking at it, 99% of the people we put on, and I'm sure we're going to want to reappoint them, but... Again, it's open to anybody who could appoint whoever they want. 
The letter that was in our packet from the police chief about the homicide vehicle task force, uh, i like to meet with the mayor and the chief over that. I have some concerns uh, about if he's on duty and has to leave or if he's investigating a homicide <laughs> by vehicle and we have to bring somebody in. I know the district attorney's office will reimburse us money, but just so we have an understanding on how that is going to work. I'd like to schedule a meeting in February if we can, which is this month or the beginning of March with our investment people who manage the money to $24 million for the sewer department so we could see how that's going. The other thing is I to schedule it. Um, oh, okay, schedule it for March, though, right? Hopefully uh, this month, maybe the 27th of February, like a Monday night again, if not the beginning of March. We had a meeting, myself, Lorraine, Greg, Mr. Sabatini, our solicitors with Mr. Mazalki about the old Boyles property, and I think we have reached an agreement. There were three issues. We, I think we got all the issues resolved. And after talking to uh, members of council, I think we're going to offer Mr. Mazalki a lease agreement the same as we offered everybody else. Am I correct, Pat, with that? I thought there was a license. 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 And license also, agreement. license to buy if we get it appraised. No, the, the agreement, we have to make a decision on a license, okay. like we gave everybody else, right. or put it out to bid to sell it, or a lease agreement. And I thought Mr. Pezzo... I, th I think my understanding was that we would give him a license, um, and then evaluate the process itself. And if it, you know, later on down the road, if something came up where we wanted to reevaluate, that we could. That's, you know, whether it be buy, sell, lease, wh whatever. I, that's kind of the understanding I had. Correct me if... if so the motion, it. I need to know what the motion is. I think the read. motion would be right now is just to give him that license. Lease. License um, agreement. That, and that doesn't preclude him, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Salerno, from later on saying, uh, or us later on saying, we want to sell it or I want to buy it. Right? Does that preclude him from doing that eventually? No. The, uh, I think the idea was with just the license agreement, he may be fine. Right. It won't cost him anything. If nobody bothers him, fine. Right. If it becomes a problem, then he has the option to come into council and say, listen, could you lease it to me or possibly subdivide it and sell it to right. me? But the idea was, this is the quickest way. Sure. If he wants to get going with his land development, he gets the license agreement. He can move forward. That, that was absolutely And like I said, if there's a problem, then we could deal with it later. But if there's not a problem... It hasn't cost anybody anything. Right. So. That, that's how I understood it. Pat, I don't know if you... Yeah. So that I'm clear, so that I'm clear, um, the precedent that we've, that we've began with both um, Canal Zend and Mr. Scanlon at 900 Radcliffe Street is that a license agreement is the, that he has use of, the, of the, the, the parking lot. He paves it. He maintains it. It doesn't belong to him. And it, the, the borough owns it so that if a... a person wanted to park in that spot, Mr. Mazaki could not stop him. Right. That's what we have it with Scanlon at 900 Radcliffe, right. and it's what we have at Canals and with That's the same Keystone. Thing we want okay. To offer him. All right. I just wanted to be clear. One that minor that. caveat to that, because I don't remember what we decide on this. He's leasing about half of his parking lot, right? If we give him this license, it'll be for well, one no, side. He, he made the argument that the car takes up 20 feet. Right. He's only using, yeah. say, 12. Right. We said to him, that strip of land yes. is to be used by anybody that wants to park there. Right, but the other side is still his. Well, that's his property. Right. I mean, I don't know it's how just, he... Just, you know, I, I think the solicitor needs to draw something right. us for... Maybe we shouldn't do it then for this month. Maybe you should draw something up, let us look at it. Well, and then do it for I something would, else. I would, I would um, like it on the agenda for this month. If well, we before to, we vote on it, we should know we're voting on it. I agree, but you know, I I really like to get moving on. That. Just so you know, uh, on the Canal Zen, that is a situation where part of that park lot is private, part of it is public, okay. and, and in fact, some of the the line goes right through some parking spaces, and to the extent that they're public parking spaces, they would be 
available to the public. Right. But like I said, because of where that's located, I'm not sure it's going to be an issue. Yeah, I don't foresee And if it's not going to be an issue, then... I think Robin brought up a good point, and she lives at Canal's End. What they're saying is he owns this strip of ground here, and you got all these parking places. If somebody parks there, it's going to happen. You, you run into that at your place. Well, I think the difference is... Do they say reserved or...? It, yes, see, we're, we're... But that's part of a condo association, which is very different. I think that Mr. Mazaki um, would have the right, since he owns that property, to tow a car if it were parked in his parking lot. Right. However, I think that the, the ordinance or, or the, the, lease, the license agreement should clearly state that the portion of the, the, the parking lot that the borough owns that he has the right to use it. However, he can't preclude anyone from parking there. I agree. So we'll the if there's 26 spots that were that's going to be created, in that agreement should say the 26 spots that are parking against the, the spur line path are borough, anybody from the borough can use them. It's pub, they're public spots, and he has to give access through his property to them. Exactly. Um, and... Like I said. Well, that should be all. I think we should try to get this by Friday, if not sooner, so that we can yeah, review it before we vote Monday night. Yeah, I could have the agreement. And Lorraine's right. He, he understood all that. I just think we just want to make sure we're Put it on paper. crossing our T's. Okay. Yeah. I don't mean to be pushy about it. I just, you know, I'd, I'd really like to see us get moving. No, that's fine. As long as we're on agreement, Pat. Um, do you think um, next Monday night, You'll be able to get through all these uh, boards and commissions. Okay. We're just going to start at the first one. I'm going to mention the name that's there. If there's no other nomination for that, I'll all in favor. I, if not, if somebody appoints somebody else at that point, then there'll be a roll call vote. Shouldn't take us more than five minutes to do it. <coughs> Alright, I was on the Mazalki thing. The next, I just want everybody to know we had our first do-op meeting. I had a committee. I appointed a committee to run it again. They all met. I wasn't at the meeting and they picked the groups that are coming for this year. Uh, we discussed the Garden Street fence. Ralph, what's the date on that? The do-op? Yeah. I'll be honest with you, I really don't right. have it. I Brad, how do you get on that committee? Yeah. I would like to be on that committee. Uh, Is it closed? The people that have been doing it every year have been doing it and are happy with the group they have, but I'll find out if they're looking for anybody else. Right. Uh, Mr. Pez and Mrs. Cohen had approached me about <coughs> setting up a meeting with Mill Run, <coughs> the people that own Mill Run, to see what the future of that property is uh, what's going on there. We noticed there's lights on in the building at night and all. Right. So again, I told Greg and Lorraine that I would have the manager set up a meeting with someone from Mill Run to come here and explain to us what's going on. Thank you. They have some concerns. I want to get the. I want to authorize the borough to sign a agreement with the redevelopment authority to try to get some some more money from the casino from their funding. There has to be an agreement signed so we can get that drawn up. The public works facility. We're working on a couple change orders. One is the furniture that we have to. The casino money. Where did we end up percentage-wise compared to the other municipalities? Were we in the middle, lower end? I think we were more towards the upper end. Upper end? But there is still more money out there? They gave it all away for okay. the year, but sometimes if you have a project mm -hmm. that you don't complete by the end of the year, right. that money becomes available again. So. As long as you have free money, free money. We've been very successful with that. Thanks to the county commissioners for approving our grant. Uh, 
to get back to the public works facility, there's going to be some change orders. There are some change orders that you're looking at, but there's going to be some more. Uh, the furniture has to be uh, purchased. We're looking into an emergency generator, which can cost about thirty-five to forty thousand dollars for that building. And we're thinking about upgrading the gas station to a different pumping system. If we're going to be pumping 20,000 gallon or more, it could change the, to get, it's almost like a pump that you would see at Wawa or whatever. We've been fortunate enough to have Mrs. Collins' husband, Steve, who's been in the business for over 30 years, advising us on what we should do. And we're sure there's going to be a change order if we decide to go with this probably between twenty five and thirty thousand dollars to upgrade the the fueling station so just to let everybody know there's some major change orders that may be coming in for this project in the light of fle uh, full disclosure you should mention that he doesn't do any work around the house no <laughs> that's true true and he's doing all this at no cost <laughs> To the borough. And he's not selling me anything. I don't know if anybody had a chance to look at the new lights that were put along the tennis courts and I the walking did. path. Beautiful, beautiful. How nice they turned out. He's uh, an Otter Street we boy. So we put some light lighting inf improvement in front of St. Mark's Church. And I also sent a letter, which I didn't get authorization for, but I sent a letter to the Archbishop when we met with Father Mooney that night supporting St. Mark's School. I received a letter back from the Archbishop within, I think, three or four days thanking me for the borough's concerns and everything. And uh, I guess the decision will be made next week on the school, if it's going to remain open or not. So hopefully uh, the Archbishop considers our to keep the school open and not shut down the school because it's a value part of, of the borough. Before I get to Mr. Dillon and our solicitor, I'm going to go to public participation because I didn't do that yet. Anybody on this side of the room would like to speak on any issues? Please go to the podium and state your name. My name is Terrence Hall. Address, please. Uh, 200 Pond Street. Two what? 200. 200. 200? Mm-hmm. My issues now? Go ahead. All right. My first issue is about the picture that was in the police station. On January 3rd or 4th, you said that you didn't even care to see the picture. All right? You feel as though that picture wasn't racist, right? Anti-gay, right? Absolutely. Where's the picture at now? The, I don't know who's got. I know Mr. Devine. Oh no, no. Where's the picture at now? That was in the police station. Cool. It was taken down. Taken down. Why? That, that, that night. Why? That. For my investigation. Purposes. For my investigation purposes. So if it wasn't racist or anti-gay, it shouldn't have been taken down, right? I felt that it should have been taken down. How long was that picture up? I have no idea. Are you in that police station every day? Not every day, no. Once a week? Probably once a week, yeah. Maybe twice a week. My understanding, the officer complained about that picture back in August. Well, if he complained about it back in August, he didn't complain to, about, to me about it. I understand that. Which officer complained? Don't matter. Next subject. Check this one out. Uh, it's in the paper that the officer that complained about the picture. He called for backup, and then he had no backup from the Bristol Borough Police. Don't shake your head, Robert. He did. It's in the paper. This, this is an no, it's two different things. It's like two different issues. It really yeah, is. Yeah, I said, I said next issue. Do you know that for a fact? It was in the paper. I'm just asking. Do you, do you know that? I have no fact? idea. You yes, have no the, idea? The mayor runs All right, excuse me, Mr. Office. Mayor. Do you know anything about that? I do now. Yes. You do now since when? I was third with papers. When was that? Uh, 
uh, right before Christmas, or right, right after Christmas. Christmas. Right after Christmas. Yes. And so when Tony Devine said there was a uh, grand jury investigation going on, you knew after Christmas, and that was January 3rd or 4th when you said that, you said you did nothing about it. I didn't make that statement. Oh, shit. When, when it's Mr. on tape. Devine, excuse it's me, on tape. Excuse me. Go ahead. When Mr. Devine originally asked me if I was aware of a, a grand jury investigation, mm -hmm. I told him that there is a possibility that there is, and I did know that there were some officers that were taken to the grand jury, that were subpoenaed be before the grand jury, and that was before Mr. Devine was elected as a councilman. Okay. So on January 3rd or 4th, I can't remember the exact day, he stated that there was a grand jury investigation, and y'all said there was not a grand jury investigation. I did not say that. You knew about one? Yes. He didn't know about one? I don't know if he knew about one or not. I mean, He's a town council president, right? Should he know about that? If it doesn't involve him, no. Okay, if it doesn't involve him, why, does, why don't it involve him? You would have to ask whoever ran the grand jury. I can't answer that question. His name is involved in the lawsuit. I'm not going to answer any of that question. Why is that a waste of time? I'm a resident. My mom and dad pay taxes. I pay taxes out here. No your tax money, your, my tax money is going to be your lawyer money. So I say it's a waste of my time. I'm not saying it's a waste of your time. You just time. not say it was a waste of time. I said it's a waste of our time because we can't really comment on it. You comment in the paper about it. I didn't comment on anything. You wrote a letter. All right. What else do you have? I'm not done with that one yet. Well, we gave you our answer. All right. Well, like I was saying about this cop, he called for backup, right? He's a fellow officer. All right, I've been doing my dirt years of going the streets and all that, and I feel as though, and my, all my relatives feel as though, if we call for a police officer to come help us, they're not going to come to help us because they didn't come help their fellow officer. Okay. Okay. Is that, is that a good feeling we should have as residents? I, I really have a hard time understanding what you're saying. I'm going to break it down easier. As a police officer, you took an oath to be good, right? They do that, right? To be good, to be by the law, to protect and serve. And they're not going to protect and serve their own fellow officer. I can't expect them to protect and serve me. Okay. Do you understand that? I understand it. Okay. Uh, what do you have? You have no concern about that? None. Why is that? Because I don't know if it's true or not what you're telling me. You know for a fact that there are a grand jury investigation about that situation going on. You know what? This is ridiculous. Why is ridiculous? No, you, you speak then. You want I'm going to I'm going to advise counsel at this point that number one, any any uh, discussion relating to the, any allegations of that lawsuit cannot be discussed by counsel. Should not be discussed in public. The number, why he said in the paper. Let me finish. Number two is we do not know what the grand jury investigation was because it's illegal for anybody to discuss it. Wow, okay? Let me finish. You what we finish. do know is that the DA said in response to Mr. DiGiuseppe's letter is that the grand jury has ceased and there were no findings. So whatever the investigation was, it resulted in no findings against this police department. Okay. Therefore, we're cleared. Number two, there is no ongoing grand jury investigation because there is no grand jury right now. So we cannot comment on something we don't know about. And if somebody has told you something about it, then they broke the law because they shouldn't be discussing the contents of what's going on during the grand jury. You can read the paper. It's on the internet. Fine. You said that eight million times. Whatever is a paper, we have no control over. Right. But I'm going to I'm going to advise this council not to discuss those issues. So you can't discuss the lawsuit the cop has against you? No, we cannot. Okay. So, due to the fact, like I said, that this cop called for backup, I believe he called for backup, and I feel his residents in our neighborhood is not safe because we call for backup, they're not going to come for us. Getting back to my point, and y'all don't care about you it. You got your point. You don't care about it, right? It's not your concern. Is your concern, Mr. Lebo? It is my concern, and that's why I'm investigating it. You're investigating. Okay, I'm making sure about that. All right. Let's go to this dirt hill on Buckley Street. That you didn't care about on January 3rd. You said you didn't care about it. It's not your concern. On January 3rd, you said that. <coughs> Remember saying that, Mr. Giuseppe? I have no idea. Okay, you did. It's on tape. Okay. All right. I take your word for it. All right. Due to the fact it's not your concern, you're the town council president. I mean, your vote really is everybody else's vote, even though it shouldn't be. 
I seen it, how you ran this meeting last time we was here. So, if you feel as though it's not your concern, and your son is a school board president, it's not going to be his concern either. So that means no, it it's nobody's concern. concern. It's not my concern, it's his concern. It's his concern. Your concern. It's not your concern due to the fact that the, when it rains, like they said, the water drips off into the street. That's not your concern in the street, though. Nope. So if that dirt was in your backyard, would it be your concern then? If it was in my backyard, it would be my dirt. So you're the town council president of Bristol Borough, correct? Correct. So this is your backyard? Correct. So why are you getting rid of that dirt? What do you want me to do? Get rid of the <gasps> Come on. You're done. You're done. All right. Okay. Anybody else on this side of the room would like to speak? Anybody on this side of the room? Mike? <laughs> Mike Marizzi, I live at 816 Third Avenue. I have a couple of issues with, uh, I have a lot of stray cats in the alley behind my house. Uh, I don't know whether there's any ordinance in the borough or if the animal control officer can do anything about these cats. Some of them are diseased. Uh, they're using my property as a bathroom. I have to step over or clean up cat mess that I don't want to deal with. I have several neighbors who feed these cats. I've asked the neighbors to stop feeding the cats. Two of them have agreed to do it. However, last night when I came home, there was a paper plate with cat food outside. So somebody's still feeding them. There's a woman who lives over on 2nd Avenue, 807, 809 2nd Avenue. I believe her name is Mingo. I went and knocked on her door the other day and kindly asked her to stop feeding the cats. She told me she promised her dead husband that she would continue to feed the cats and couldn't break her promise said she, if she stopped feeding the cat, she wouldn't know what to do with the 2,000 cans of cat food that she has in her house. I asked her to bring the cats in her house. She already has four cats. She told me the borough, that I could go and complain to whoever I want. The borough's not going to do anything about it. It's really, the cats are a byproduct of people leaving food out for the cats. And one of these cats is ridden with disease. Half its fur is off one side. I'm sure it's got fleas, ticks, carrying typhus. Are they living in the house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the other issue. The neighbor directly behind me on 2nd Avenue, I believe his address is 807. His garage is virtually dilapidated. Has, there's no garage door on it. He has quite the collection of refuge piled up in his backyard. The cats live in what's left of his garage. The neighbors put the food out, the cats live there, they breed, they scream in the middle of the night. It's, I've had it. Well, Robin's been very successful working with the SPCA. So what I just asked her is, would she take this on tomorrow, maybe meet with the borough inspector? She's familiar with, she's got the right phone numbers for contacts with the SPCA. And maybe get your number after the meeting <coughs> between you, her, the SBCA and the borough uh, inspector, we could clean this up real quick. And I think I called I mean, the Board of Health today, and the Board of Health, you know, if people leave food out, and there's no law against stray cats but, or but leaving that's food. Well, that's we one of the other issues the, I wanted, to, I'd like to bring up. With the ACL. we have leash laws with dogs. We have dogs have to be licensed. And is it within a possibility that the borough could right, investigate? What they said, Mike, last time we dealt with this with skunks and possums. And I'm not talking about skunks. Know, I'm not talking about wild stuff. What they're considering a cat is a free-roaming animal. That was their interpretation of this law where, if you see it on the news every night, where right. they take hundreds of cats out of a home. There, But... I think Robin can get to the bottom of it. She's, like I said, been very successful in dealing with this. Catwoman. Catwoman, guys. Watch yourself. Well, I'd also like somebody to look at this ramshackle mess well, on this same, gentleman's with backyard. With the involved, we can look at the garage and the, yeah. the whole thing. I, I, you know, I try to be a good neighbor. I keep my property nice and neat. That whole, that whole alley towards the upper end of the alley is it's just strewn with I'm sorry okay. it, the alley is just it's a mess people don't clean up after themselves there's trash outside all the time I mean, is there something that can be done to 
entice these people to clean up back there. Absolutely. Because uh, it's really becoming a quality of life issue. on tomorrow morning, first thing. Very good. Thank you for your time. Like, real quick, I tell my, we got this, it, it, the North Woods that run wild with cats. I can't stand it. And it's like it's Andrew just, Lloyd Webber just came into the Yeah, room. yeah. And uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It really is. And we have people feeding cats all over the place. So, Can't we pass an ordinance I in the borough or an recommendation to pass an ordinance that but, you can't leave food out to feed stray animals? Well, see, that's what I was going to ask, Bill. Is that, and I know what the SPCA it says, but can we, in a residential neighborhood, in a residential neighborhood that you're not allowed to put food out to feed stray, because what happens is they come out and they feed the cats. And when they feed the cats, the possum come and the skunk come. And, and then the rats are going to be right behind That's the problem, is that when they They're put the food. And again, I don't have a problem. I know when, I mean, I'm, I'm a dog and cat lover, and I don't have a problem. You know, you feel bad. You see a hungry cat, you know, you feed it. But, I believe he makes a face. But the point is, it may be not in a residential neighborhood. It's not fair to your neighbor. So, you know, maybe we can set up some cat feeding. There used to be at the old... Uh, Donald, at the, Donald, maybe we shouldn't even... Think of setting up some cat feeding. Cat. Somebody, cat cat. somebody should take care of. If, if you love cats that much, bring them into your house. Take care of them in your house. Oh my God! You're gonna have a cat. cat. I don't want a cat. Cats belong inside. Yeah, but you can't. You can't. You can't dictate that. You can't tell people. But the, and, and that's where I. I I'm talking feral cats here. Well, feral see, cats I take issue with mean. that. I mean, we can dictate that you have to have your dog on a leash. We can. We can dictate that your dog has to be licensed. Why can't, as a governing body, we make some well, ordinance to control That's what I'm saying. I'd rather cats. get some kind of ruling from the SPCA and let our solicitor look into what's legal and what's not legal. And, you know, it seems, seems like a minor issue, but it's really... No, it's not, not a minor issue. issue. It's, it's ridiculous. I got, I got it's like all over true. town, Mike. Yeah. yeah. All right. I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you. Anybody else on this side of the room? Probably can't wait my name's Kevin Lochran, 243 Madison Street, Crystal. <coughs> Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, I spoke to Mrs. Cullen. I'm from the Ancient Order of Hibernians. We do a lot of civic events for the uh, Borough of Bristol, stock and food pantries and autism walk. I mean, I see you and the mayor work, walking every year with us. We do a lot of events. You know, we're, you know, uh, celebrating our 127th anniversary of our club. I'd like to uh, see if the council would uh, proclaim March Irish Heritage Month. That's my uh, request. And on top of that, I'd like to see if we can raise the Irish flag on March 17th. It's a Saturday under the American flag. I, you know, I spoke to Mrs. Cullen a couple of months ago about it. I know she pulled, pulled counsel. So I'd like to look into it, sir. Make it an agenda item, Maureen. It sounds great. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Mm. St. Patty's Day, right? Yeah, St. Patty's Day, yeah. I'm Catherine McCarry from 336 Cedar Street. Uh, I hate to be redundant, <laughs> but... Even my friends from Levittown don't like the fence. <laughs> and I would like to say that if someone's going to cause menace on the rail t on the tracks, they can climb the steps of the railroad station, can they not? We argued that same point. Uh, I also, uh, most importantly, well, the station, the surface of the station platform is crumbling. It's crumbling, especially <coughs> where the passengers get on and off the train, and, and they could at least <coughs> sprain or break their ankle or worse. It's just crumbling to pieces. I, I've never, I think that the old Victorian station lasted longer than this station. And um, it really needs to be addressed. Right at the cautionary, like the yellow line portal? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right near the rail tracks. I did look really well at the, at the Trent, what's called the Trenton side near the parking lot, but on the Garden Street side, it's, it's very bad. And um, I, don't, I think the whole thing needs to be redone, but... Um, Our argument's been that they just put millions of dollars in the Croydon, and they're going to the put millions, of dollars, their station, but, millions uh, of dollars in the Levittown. They're going to break their legs. And they jumped over Bristol. It's like, you know, we just can't get... Well, they at least need to do some immediate repair because even the, uh, I don't know, you call them a support metal that where they pour the concrete over, that's being exposed at least at one point. Jim, can you get somebody out there tomorrow and get There's a letter There's about 11 off? different spots where it's crumbling. We'll get a letter off tomorrow by, by the end of the business day. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, and there's also a lot of trash. I'm sorry, one more thing. There's a lot of trash. Like if you go on the Garden Street side and you look behind the retaining wall, there's lots of trash. I don't know who would be cleaning it up, but it looks awful. That's up to them. But that's been our argument. When you put the fence up, it's even going to get worse. <coughs> right. And, and if the grass grows and bushes grow, I mean, isn't that the fire prevention thing that they tried last year? They wanted to get rid of yeah. fire hazards. They cut all the trees to give access to emergency management mm -hmm. to get to the train to rescue people. Mm -hmm. Now they want to put an eight-foot fence up. Right. I mean, um, but the, uh, there really is a problem near the edge of the platform where people are constantly going up and down the train. That's all I have to say. Go ahead, Mr. Sabatini. Uh, President, real quick, on getting back to the Garden Street. Uh, mm -hmm. On Garden Street, a lot of the people that live across from the railroad station take care of that property. Oh, I'm sure they do. I picked and a lot it, of stuff up myself. And shop. one of them is a borough employee that on Saturdays and Sundays, he's out there weed whacking, mowing, keeping it nice. Mm -hmm. That fence goes up. We're going to have literally an eyesore, number one, and it's going to be a hazard for a potential accident. It's like the first one that we look at. Just like it's near uh, Jefferson Avenue. It just it looks uh, overgrown. That, right. that looks like you, uh, someone could live back there and you never see them. And once they build a fence, it's going to have all the mysticism of Holmesburg Bird. Junction, you know, mm -hmm. Holmesburg Prison. It I just will look awful because the street is too narrow. Sure but I know that I'm just kind of blabbing. <laughs> no, it's the truth. <laughs> so I hope we can resolve this, but the the ankle problem or the tripping problem is really a concern of mine. That's bad. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Mr. Dillon, you want to run down the items for consideration? Okay. Uh, for Council's consideration Monday evening is the ordinance repealing the sex offender ordinance. A copy of the ordinance was attached <laughs> to the uh, packet. Also, the ordinance, no left turn signs for the school traffic and improvement study. Uh, that was also uh, in, in your packet. Uh, also uh, enclosed were uh, change orders that I approved uh, per council's authorization. Uh, they were change orders 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, uh, they will be on your agenda for ratification. Next item would be approving the time extension for the Amish market land development to July 31st, 2012. Hopefully their engineer will have everything uh, responded to our engineer by that time and our planning commission will have a chance to review it. So hopefully uh, it will be on your agenda no later in July. Also a uh, motion to authorize acquisition of 1027 Elm Street. Uh, this is the property that, uh, that we've been able to acquire uh, from the bank uh, for, uh, I can say the price, right? 24000 is it $24,000? 20, $24, so uh, also a motion to authorize Towns Against Graffiti annual donation of $1,500 in your packet. Uh, was their uh, request along with on the back of it was all the locations that they've uh, cleaned up for us. So I think they do an outstanding job and many times they're out within 48 hours of us contacting them. Uh, also, uh, Crystal Steel Jury of View decision was attached. Uh, there was no additional compensation awarded by the jury of you. This has been going on for a couple years, so uh, 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 I was told uh, Mr. White and uh, Mr. Salerno, uh, you know, presented uh, a very excellent case to the jury, and it was unanimous that no additional compensation would be awarded. Uh, also in your packet was uh, the. Uh, uh, couple pages of the Heritage Conservancy's uh, newsletter uh, where they mention about the uh, Bristol Marsh. They had more than 75 volunteers cleaning it up from the high school, George School, EPA, Greenbelt Overall Alliance, etc. 
Also, uh, King George uh, graciously provided lunch to all the volunteers. So it was a very bitter, cold day, but uh, they made uh, they certainly cleaned up that area. And also on the other side of the creek, uh, they got into that area also. Also in your packet was the uh, the ice arena audit. I don't know uh, and. Uh, as well as the financials for December. But if you look on page four of the audit, uh, certified audit uh, in 2010, the net proceeds was $5,000. This past year, 2011, which uh, closes out as of June 30th, 2011, uh, the net cash flow. Uh, was 275,000. So we've made progress. It's no way will you ever be able, in my opinion, uh, to make sufficient funds to meet your debt service. But uh, we're now using some of this money to make some capital improvements there. And uh, but that's just a point of information. Also in your packet was a memo. Uh, if I can find it from uh, Angie. Uh, dealing with the uh, state audit. It was uh, approximately a 10-day audit. Uh, yeah, I have it here. And uh, on uh, January 20th, there was the exit conference after the 10 days worth of audits. Uh, it was for the liquid fuels account from 2008 through 2010. Basically, this deal dealt with the road program, and uh, there was that absolutely no findings. So I think that was extraordinary. Uh, usually, uh, they can find something, some minor findings or whatever, but there was absolutely no findings uh, when this audit was finished. And uh, I think that goes to show, uh, you know, Angie doing an excellent job along with Bridget, George, and engineer and. Uh, you know, as well as, uh, you know, council doing that road program. Uh, they ordered it more than $2,200,000 worth of expenditures. Uh, so uh, we should have the final audit in the next few months. But I uh, want to make note that there were no findings. That's a term of art uh, with accountants. So uh, Great job. Uh, also, you may see uh, on the road maintenance uh, with this weather, it's enabled our guys to do uh, additional work. Uh, this past week, they started crack sealing uh, certain areas of town. So uh, we're going to continue that process uh, through the year. You know, trying to seal the curbs from curb line as well as any cracks in the road. I think that's about it that I have. That's it. That's it. Got no. Mary, you have anything? Uh, what I wanted to bring up, you already brought up about the uh, vehicle homicide task force. Uh, we'll sit down and we'll meet about that. And the chief did tell me that uh, <clears throat> for two weeks, uh, Monday through Friday, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. He did do a uh, traffic control detail at 13 and Mill, and uh, they didn't find any unusual. Wait a minute. Is that that corner I've been talking about? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I beg you. Set, wait. 7 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night? That's right. Is he saying there was a car there from no, set? No. He just said that between them hours he had cars in the area periodically during the day. Wow. I take issue with that. I'll, I'll deal. I'll talk to the chief. I'm telling you, I wouldn't make that up. They fly across that bridge. I see. No. Have anything before I'll wait we till adjourn? Somebody gets <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Get rid of that. I'm going to make you a copy of that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Wait, wait, give me your number. Hey, what are you doing? Tony Devine. I work.